Closed captioning is brought to you by it and Life in Motion. KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson Navigation, serving Guam and Micronesia for 20 years. Cars Plus, Dodge Challenger, the undisputed champion. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Tamuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Coming up on your primetime news, new details are released into the island's latest traffic-related death. Plus, KUM's Valerie Maige has a closer look at the Legislative Ethics Committee's latest investigation into one of their own. Also tonight, repairs are underway at the island's public schools. Isa Baza joins in on the efforts to get things ready for the start of the school year. Afternoon, good evening everybody. If you're watching us live on KUM TV or streaming us on any social platform, we thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Well, it is a deadly stretch of highway to begin the news, and over the last few years, Route 10 over in Mingilao has been the scene of a handful of auto pedestrian fatalities. Just yesterday, a driver involved in the most recent traffic-related fatality placed under arrest and charged in court today. Crystal Paco reports. 66 miles per hour in a posted 35. Police concluded that's how fast Richard Dede Austria was driving the night he allegedly hit Roki Rokop, who died from a neck fracture and broken back. The incident occurred back in June along Route 10 in Mingilao, just in front of Uncle Cho's Mart. Had Austria followed the speed limit, police report he would have had more than enough time to avoid impact. Austria, who was charged on Tuesday with vehicular homicide and negligent homicide, told police he jammed the brakes. But the brakes locked and he lost steering mobility. Though Austria was sober, court documents state Rokop was not, with a blood alcohol content of 0.24, which is three times the legal limit. According to Mingila Mayor Alan Ngakta, it's a deadly combination. Residents reporting those who are walking at night also drinking near the store. It's been, it's been brought up to my attention that there's people that uh, are in the parking lot or next to the jungle areas within the vicinities of the mom and pop stores on Route 10. So it's a, it's a great concern of mine, most especially on the safety aspect of everything. Court documents indicate the area is poorly lit and that the nearest pedestrian walkway is a quarter of a mile away. So there's only a couple of uh, uh, crosswalks and traffic lights in the area. Angakta urges both motorists and pedestrians proceed with caution. Be very vigilant with your surroundings and practice, uh, you know, the, the acts of uh, maybe looking left, making looking right twice and before crossing the street or even as a motorist to be more vigilant, especially on Route 10. And I highly encourage it uh, in, in terms of even with the upcoming school year, let's, uh, let's be in preparation of that. Angakta says according to his office records, the Rokop family lives in the Mingilao area closer to the University of Guam. KUAM also spoke with employees from the nearby establishments who said Rokop frequented the area. Austria, meanwhile, was released on a $10,000 performance bond. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Crystal Paco. Well, the former police officer convicted in the 2015 shooting death of fellow cop Bert Piola was set to go back to court tomorrow. Mark Troy Jr. is scheduled to go before a Superior Court judge for a restitution hearing. We've now reported that the prosecution filed a motion to continue the hearing as the victim's wife, Mika Piolo, would be off-island. Troy has objected to paying restitution other than what the Criminal Injuries Compensation Commission already paid out. The former GPD officer, who remains under house arrest, was sentenced to eight years in prison for negligent homicide. Piolo's wife is seeking $1.8 million in restitution for funeral, medical expenses, and lost wages. The hearing is 9 a.m. tomorrow before Judge Michael Berdalio. She was expecting a special delivery in the mail, over 50 grams of the drug ice. A federal complaint states authorities confronted Dolores Diana Westfall at the Dededo Post Office just days before delivery. The feds intercepted the package and replaced the drugs with sham. The package, which was arriving from Washington, had drugs hidden in a magazine and an internal envelope. Westfall was accompanied by another unidentified individual, both of whom were transported for interview, where Westfall reportedly confessed to being paid to deliver the package to a person in the village of Agate. She also confessed to participating participating in drug deliveries in June 2017, in which she was paid at least one gram of meth. In other Island News headlines, a 19-year-old man was caught with his pants down. Guyver Walton Nena was arrested and charged after police found him and a minor girl 
parked at a Dedido school in the middle of the night. The two admitted to having sex before police arrived, as well as multiple occasions prior. Though Nenna told police he thought the girl was 17, she was actually, in fact, 15 years old. Busted for drugs and running from the cops. When police tried to pull him over, court documents state Ryan Jude Alcantara sped up and kept driving. Before coming to a stop, he was seen throwing a pouch out of the shoulder of the road, which contained a loaded improvised glass pipe and empty baggies and straws. He denied owning the pouch and suggested the items belonged to the people in the nearby house, stating, quote, since they were druggies. When asked if he would take a drug test, he told police he'd test positive for the drug ice, but was adamant the pouch wasn't his. Though he admitted to owning the marijuana pipe in the car, he told police they should be looking for bigger fish because he is, quote, small time. Alcantara is also listed as a level three sex offender. A 45-year-old was pulled over for an expired license plate but arrested on drug charges. Court documents state that Leonard Ignacio appeared nervous during the traffic stop and did not have any vehicle documentation or a driver's license. On his person, he had a pipe in his pocket and told police he used the item to smoke ice. The investigative hearing for Senator Jim Espaldon is underway this week. But as per a Committee on Ethics members and the Open Government Law, we the media and you the public will not know the details of what's happening behind the closed door sessions, at least for the time being. It's our next report with Valerie Maike. The committee has been mum on the investigation. Today, however, comes Resolution 168. It would transfer $15,000 from the Central Operations Fund to the Ethics Committee. If adopted, this would be the second resolution for a transfer of money. Back in May, $5,000 was transferred under Resolution 134 for the committee to contract out its legal counsel. Legislative Ops Chair Senator Dennis Rodriguez. I um, received a request from the Committee on Ethics um, Chairman um, requesting for additional uh, funding to conduct their investigation. It was specific if you take a, if you see the um, this resolution, but it also calls for that if there's any uh, remaining funds from this um, additional allocation, uh, that it be returned to central operations at the completion of the current case. Espaldon is currently under investigation for his alleged involvement in a generator deal between the Commonwealth Utilities Corporation in the Northern Mariana Islands and a company with connections to one of Espaldon's legislative staffers. So what does the Committee on Ethics look for when it comes to conflicts of interest? If there's a connection, a direct connection or a close connection, typically it's with the immediate family that involves money or the... Um, perception or reality that something of value is being traded, either gained um, through that connection, then it's usually even better just to stay away. Committee Chairman Senator Fernando Estevez says there are some gaps with divestiture disclosure. There kind of was a lack of that divestiture and disclosure within the Guam legislature. And so divesting that in information and disclosing it, one, will really prevent any, any senator from accidentally um, putting themselves in a situation where there is a conflict, potential conflict, or just the appearance of a conflict, uh, which is all detrimental to, to our branch of government. Estevez says, when in doubt, conflict it out. I think disclosure is the most important thing. If you put it out there for the world to see, that usually kind of initiates that level of trust, right? Here I am, this is what I do, this is everything about me for you to see. I have nothing to hide. As for the closed-door investigative hearings, it's a rather different approach from a decade ago when former Senator and Guam Federation of Teachers President Matt Rector was under investigation. Rector's hearing was televised and open to the public, but those rules have since changed. I believe in transparency, I do, but transparency should come with the full picture. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Valerie Maige. Staying with news from the legislature, legislation to move the primary election to the first Saturday of August and changing the timeline for filing nomination papers is a big help to the Guam Election Commission. Senator Mary Torres introduced Bill 156, which moves to make such changes. GEC Executive Director Maria Pangolinan says the current dates for the last weekend in August makes it more difficult as officials are working on ballot production, voter registration, and precinct official training between the primary and the general election. Last year, the commission spent almost nine $90,000 in overtime. Meanwhile, legislation to eliminate the primary election entirely is set for a public hearing this Friday. Senator Joe St. Augustine's Bill 45 would leave the election to the parties. It would also make the general election a holiday. The public hearing for that bill is scheduled for 10:30 in the morning. 
Elsewhere, the Archdiocese of Agana remains committed to bringing restoration and healing to all victims of clergy sex abuse. This by way of a recent press release acknowledging the most recent lawsuits against the church. That release states in part, quote, The Archdiocese takes sexual abuse very seriously. We care deeply about every person who steps forward and we look forward to full resolution of all cases, end quote. Said resolution could come soon for a majority of the cases as parties expressed optimism now that the Oregon-based retired federal judge Michael Hogan has agreed to serve as mediator. He'll be here in October. The church, meanwhile, through Hope and Healing Guam, will continue to provide pastoral care and therapeutic counseling for all victims. The number to call is 1-888-649-5288. Stay tuned. We're back with more news after the break. There are more ways to experience KUAM News than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM News app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming, KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. Have you gotten paid yet? That's the premium automatic insurance deduction plan from Calvo's Insurance. Paid simplifies your home and auto insurance. No down payment. No more long lines. And you can stretch your payments up to 12 months. Paid is convenient. It deducts from your payroll, your checking account, or your credit card. With Paid, you get up to 65% off your car insurance and enjoy lifestyle club discounts. Life can be easier when you get paid. Call Calvo's Insurance today and save on your home and auto insurance. This is Tabby. Tabby. Tabby's service provider is it &E. This allows her to walk on campus without having to rely on Wi-Fi. Hey, Abby. Tabby. Hey, I sent you to it student plan just like you. I love how affordable their plan is. I'm so glad I switched to it &E. What? Get up to 5 gigs a month for just $30 and the first three months free at it &E. and at Shell, it's about offering more than just fuel. It's about providing service to people. From hot coffees to warm welcomes, from clean bathrooms to fresh food, we're on a mission to make you leave happier than when you arrived. So whatever your journey, we're here. Welcome to service. Welcome to Shell. Serving the islands for over 30 years. Share your story at Shell Foodies Guam on Instagram and Facebook. Hashtag Station Stories. Hashtag Shell Guam. Chuck E. Cheese's Guam is not all fun and games. Our pizza is delicious with the freshest toppings, oven baked to order. Try the fresh salad bar, sandwiches, and don't forget our mouth-watering wings. Come and eat at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. Hyundai Summer Clearance Event is happening now. At Guam's best dealership, Cars Plus and Mighty. With financing as low as 1.99%. There's no better time to drive a new Hyundai Accent, ranked highest in initial quality, starting at just $11,995. Or the new Hyundai Elantra, starting at $16,995. SUV lovers, check out the new Hyundai Tucson, starting at $19,995. Plus, every new Hyundai gets Guam's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. It's our Hyundai Summer Clearance Event. Going on now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. Connect with KUAM News. Find us on your favorite social media platform. Follow us and stay in the know with Guam's news leader. Hoffman and welcome back. The start of classes for public schools is just around the corner. Tonight, Issa Baza has more on what school officials are doing to get campuses ready for students. 16 days and counting until classes begin, meaning school officials like Candy Mariano are working around the clock. We have... Uh Day of classes. We do anticipate that the entire scope of work will take 45 days to complete, but our plan is to focus all of the uh, most of our efforts on trying to make classrooms available to the, to, to the students um, as a first you know, phase. And, I, and we're planning to get that done uh, near the start of school. Other schools that have bigger projects to address include Ocean View Middle School and George Washington High School. We don't want anybody back on campus. Uh, in the classrooms uh, asking questions about the you know a potential asbestos exposure so we like to take care of that and and this is the best time to do it during the summer we're working on two solutions for ocean view number one it's their d wing is um, again it's a it's a building that was supposed to be temporary but it's been there for 20 some years already and it's, it's a lot of it is it's a wood and tin structure essentially um, so that's not going to last very long. Fernandez said he anticipates all schools will be ready to open come August 17th. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Issa Baza. 
we got some more DOE news for you now. As roughly 100 educators are expected to take part in the Guam of Education Balanced Leadership Training for principals and teacher leaders this week. Deputy Superintendent Joe Sanchez says the training focuses on each school's improvement plans and how to better provide support at the school level. This round of training is really working with the schools on strengthening that plan, clarifying their goals and objectives, clarifying the different um, activities and strategies that they're going to be using at the school level, as well as what type of professional development they're going to be providing to their teachers and staff throughout the, throughout the school year. The training session ends Thursday at the Westin. Sanchez noted additional professional development training will be held at each individual school starting on the 14th. The Port Authority is waiting on legislative approval for the first bond float in its history. Speaking before the Tumon Bay Rotary Club, General Manager Joanne Brown said they hope to borrow up to $80 million for infrastructure improvement and to construct a new port administration building. Brown says they will pay back the money through a new tariff that went into effect in June. The first two years will be at 7%, the remaining three years will be a 1% increase. So these numbers are calculated on what we anticipate will be hopefully an increase in cargo that we will be moving. And that allows us to actually reduce the rate towards the end rather than continue to keep it at 7%. One of the main renovations will be at Hotel Wharf, which Brown says they hope to restore to a multi-use wharf where cruise vessels and other ships can dock. Brown said the port also needs a new admin building because the current headquarters is 50 years old and deteriorating. She says they have a number of shipping tenants that also support a new facility. The port has identified the old USO Siemens Club location as the site for the building. NAFAC Marianas awarded a $7.2 million contract to Tiki Gak Construction of Alaska for a landfill closure on Anderson Air Force Base. The work includes construction of a final cover system, passive landfill gas venting, final cover slope protection drainage system, and upgrades to a leachate system. The contract also includes an option to process and dispose of 5,000 tons of scrap wood and green waste to an EPA-permitted solid waste facility. Work is done in February 2019. The Commission on Decolonization is inviting the United Nations to send a visiting mission to Guam. Governor Eddie Calvo signed the letter inviting the group here. He said the commission took it upon itself to extend the invitation since the U.S. has yet to facilitate a U.N. visit. He believes it will be an effective way to help prepare for U.S. and U.N. approved self-determination plebiscite. In the letter, Calvo also mentions his current legal challenge of the so-called Dave Davis decision. The commission discussed including a copy of the Davis ruling with that letter. We send this letter out, and maybe the only thing that we will be sending additional information. Okay. Uh, and with that su su subsequent information, mm -hmm. you, you know, because really what we want to do is, if we're going to provide a report on the Davis case, you know, a lot of these folks don't even know the American legal system. Former Guam resident Dave Davis had challenged the self-determination plebiscite as discriminatory against him as a non-Chamorro. And District Court Judge Francis Tedinko Gatewood agreed that a Chamorro-only vote was unconstitutional. The commission also discussed a long-term education campaign on self-determination that will be rolled out by the Education Department for all grade levels. Well, over the weekend, the University of Guam hosted a mitigation workshop aimed at teaching simple techniques to protect coconut trees from the dangerous and pesky coconut rhinoceros beetle. Our Joan Ungancharfers has more in this next report. On Saturday, the University of Guam Cooperative Extensive Service hosted Saving Your Coconut Tree, a coconut rhinoceros beetle workshop. They're small pests, but pose big problems for our island and potentially our neighbors. In fact, during a Guam Invasive Species Council meeting held last month, stakeholders spoke out for the need of a green waste management plan. And at the workshop, the same sentiment was shared. Here is the biggest problem. For years, this is how we have dealt with green waste. We push it off to the side, and guess what? Out of sight, out of mind. I don't have to deal with it anymore. And, 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 and what bothers me is, when people are clearing their property, they're still doing this. Speaking at the workshop was Extension Agent Roland Kitagua, who says he knew that green waste was going to cause big problems when it came to mitigating the rhino beetle. We had a quarantine zone, and the quarantine zone, I, thought it was working, but I said, the next area we're going to find them is at all the green waste, uh, uh, permitted green waste uh, sites. So we put traps at all the dumps, and that's exactly where we hit it. Kirigua, who is also the chair of the Green Waste Ad Hoc Committee, shared common misconceptions and showcased the best tools for control tactics. It's a different world nowadays. If you have a dead coconut tree and you want to take it down, 
The best way to do that is with the back hole. You want to take that back hole, take the bucket, and push from the highest point possible to use the leverage and tilt and, and knock it over. Once the root comes up, that's when you can chop it up. But if you think you're going to dig that out, good luck. As KUAM reported earlier this month, Governor Eddie Cavill had signed an executive order in hopes of controlling the evasive coconut rhinoceros beetle population. The beetle was first discovered in Guam back in 2007 and has since had devastating effects on the island's coconut tree population. This is our responsibility. The only way we are going to get a handle on this, the only way we're going to stop this, we all have to do our part. For more information, you can call 735-2093 or head over to KUAM.com for the exact link for more resources. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Charfris. And with regional headlines, here's KSPN2 News. Hoffa Day, Guam. Here's what's making headlines in the CNMI. Late into Monday night, legislature held a special session working on appropriations of additional funds now available for the 2018 budget. After careful review of the proposed appropriations, I have great concerns in regards to the proposed appropriation as it compares to the needs of the school system. Members of the public school system were in attendance of the special meeting asking for a substantial slice of the pie. Our budget is $54 million. Okay, right now they're only giving us $35 million. But you heard the speaker and everybody else said that there's future funding coming and that we will be entitled to 25% of a, uh, supplemental to match the 54 million. And one police cadet who broke the law five days before his cadet graduation will not be able to rejoin the police force. Robert De Leon Guerrero, police commissioner, says all of his officers are held to a higher standard. Well, standards for police officers are set, uh, whether it's a seasoned officer or the new officers. That being said, another rookie officer who crashed his car into a tree and was charged with reckless driving in a DUI that same weekend is still with the department. He is on administrative duty. That's your KSPN 2 News Roundup. For more, go to SaipanTV.com. I'm Sherry Riggs reporting. All right, everybody, coming up in sports, Chris has results from the Guam Weightlifting Federation Open. But first, here is what Mother Nature has in store for you and I. you up to three times more data comes the dawn of a new data the epic story of guam's only network brave enough to give 10 free gigs of bonus data on every line every month to customers who bundle their services reviewers are calling the offer totes awesome best deal ever and yes visit gta.net for details Want a real taste of New York? The Big New Yorker tempts you with freshly made dough rolled into 16 inches of foldable crust. It's handmade to perfection with a sweet marinara sauce and your favorite topping. And at 30% larger than our large, the Big New Yorker is only $10.99 for one topping. Bring together your family and friends for a Big New Yorker party. Each pizza is just $10.99 with one topping. The Big New Yorker, so close you can taste it. Only at your Island Pizza Hut. Welcome back, Grandma. Wow. I did a lot of shopping in Italy. And I met a nice man. Ciao. Gino. Gino. Da Italia. He's Italian. Very cool. Buick now has an SUV for that. The new Buick Envision. One of three luxury SUVs from the new Buick. Pay no interest for 72 months across this three SUV lineup. Plus, get purchase allowance on Envision Preferred, Enclave Leather, and Encore Premium models when you finance through GM Financial. 
Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. Off a day, Guam. Chris Barnett with Sports Montes Tuesday. All proudly brought to you by Triple J. Let's kick it off. We're going to pump you up. A little weightlifting news right now. Guam Weightlifting Federation Open held at CrossFit Chamorai in Tamuning with 10 male, 12 women athletes taking part in the event. Female competitors were split into three divisions while the guys competed in the senior division. The event, an Olympic-style weightlifting comp consisting of the snatch and clean and jerk. Results were determined by Sinclair coefficients. I know, you're wondering, what are those? Sinclair coefficients, a means to compare different weight classes in Olympic weightlifting. The total for each body weight category, a projection of the total for that weightlifter if he or she were a competitor in the heaviest body weight category with the same level of ability. And results, women third place, Army Almazan second, Alan Garcia. Jacinta Sumagese score 217.559 over in the men. Third place, Brandon Holm. Second, Harold Aranda, and taking first place, Julius Naranjo, with a score of 311.047. Full results by weight category and division can be viewed on the Guam Weightlifting Federation Facebook page. A lift score will be submitted to the Oceana Weightlifting Federation for rankings. Guam Elite Basketball FSM League Kosrai, the fruit basket of Micronesia and 1-2-4, meeting up in the consolation game with three minutes left in regulation and the game tied at 31 apiece. 1-2-4's Max Kepwe put his team up 34-31 after hitting a free throw and scoring a bucket on his team's following possession. Turnovers late in the game prevented Kosrai from possibly taking the lead. Bert Aralong went to the line for Kosrai and sank a pair of freebies. Teammate Jules Makulong drove hard to the basket, able to get the shot to go and draw contact for the foul. Kosrai leading by 1, 35-34 with less than 30 left on the clock. But a late free throw from 1-2-4 would tie the game at 35 apiece and send the two teams into overtime. Buckets, you couldn't buy one in OT. The only basket scored in extra time was off a free throw. They gave 1-2-4 the 36-35 lead with 10 seconds left in the contest uh, with the game on the line. Kosrai inbounding the ball. Bert Arulong dribbles past one defender, gets by another, attacking the rim. Shots off. First tip and attempt, no good. But Watson, Tommy, say Watson, gets up and tips the ball in for the game-winning score. And Kosrai by one, 37-36, winners. Chuk and Yes Deer taken to the court next for the championship trophy. Chuk's John Caminato, corner three to get the game started. John Ross Soden finishing with 13 points for Yes Deer. Soden hit four shots from outside all net here to Lodza. On paper, Chuk looked to run away with the title. Good passing around the perimeter. Three point off. Ball gets tipped out to Caminato. Nice pass on the down low to Cass. 